All right, we're still in civil secret teaching of Taigong's six secret teachings. Fullness and emptiness. King Wen asked Taigong, The world is in a confusing state of prosperity and weakness, peace and chaos. What is the cause? Is it due to the wisdom and incompetence of rulers? Or is it the result of destiny and nature? Taigong replied, If the ruler is not wise, the country will suffer from crisis and uprisings. If the ruler is a sage, the country will be peaceful and its citizens obedient. Therefore, the fortunes and misfortunes of the Zhao dynasty lie in the wisdom and foolishness of its ruler. It is not the result of the twist of fate. And I highlighted this, right? The fortunes and misfortunes of the dynasty lie in the wisdom and foolishness of its ruler. So, like, whatever you're doing in your life, whether it's wise or foolish, the result is not a twist of fate or misfortune. The result is because of what you have chosen. King Wen asked, could you tell me a story of wise rulers in ancient times? Tai Gong said, Emperor Yao was referred to as a sage in his day. King Wen asked, how did he administer his country? Tai Gong explained, when Emperor Yao was the sovereign, he did not use gold, silver, pearl, or jade as accessories. He did not wear over-embellished clothes. He did not appreciate rare and precious things. <clears throat> he did not collect antiques nor listen to sensual music. He did not decorate his palace walls nor add intricate beams and pillars. He did not trim the grass in his garden. He wore deerskin and sackcloth in winter to cover his body. He ate simple food and drank wild vegetable soup. He did not impose labor service on the people to protect their agricultural and weaving activities. And I highlighted that he restrained his own desires and greed. He ran his country peacefully and without intervening unnecessarily. He promoted official in highlight. He promoted officials who were just and loyal and increased the salary of officials who were incorruptible and loving. He respected those who were filial towards their seniors and affectionate towards their juniors. He encouraged the people to focus on agricultural activities. He could tell virtue from evil. He rewarded compassionate families and promoted fairness and morality. He made laws to punish evildoers. He rewarded the people he disliked based on their accomplishments. He punished the people who he liked who had committed crimes. He looked after orphans, widows, and those left on their own. He assisted those who suffered from misfortune and loss. And I highlighted that Emperor Yao himself lived a humble life and imposed only a meager tax upon, a meager tax upon his people. All under heaven lived a prosperous and contented life. Without any trace of hunger or poverty, people loved him just as they worshipped the sun and the moon. They viewed him like they did their own parents. King Wen said, what a great and virtuous ruler. So <clears throat> I think that there's a lot to take away from just the taking what is said here and pulling it out of context of first the fortunes and misfortunes of the Zhao dynasty. So we can just take that and overlay it on any of our lives. And then how is it ruled? How is it a fortunate dynasty for so long? By restraining his own desires and his greed peacefully without unnecessary intervention. Living humbly and only, opposing, <clears throat> only imposing a meager, a meager tax upon his people all under heaven lived a prosperous life. Being humble right salt of the earth and i think the meager tax whether whether it's taxation of yourself and your body physically over exhausting making sure that you live a life that is within balance and you're not overdoing any portion of it and so tax is a different subject that we're not going to tackle but i think that those are some major takeaways to being virtuous and how virtuousness can lead to fullness.